was quite not worthy, and neither this from their number 17, Siobhan Francis. So they have the foot to not covering the ball well. But Kingston College have made that change. Yamario McCarthy, the number 29, has been brought on for Siobhan Gale. So 20 out, 29 in. And the reason from assistant coach Raymond Watson, they want more steel in the middle of the park. There he is. I wonder if it's an admission that they haven't been doing well in midfield to hold box on. Well, let's see if it'll work. Morrison. Blair. Long ball, a little fat, can see too much on it. Again, when they move the ball quickly along the turf, Kingston College, they do look quite dangerous. Very fleet footed Atkinson and Robinson. Morrison to a lesser extent as well. So they certainly have the ability to get in between the lines of this box all defense. They just need to make sure that they have the finishing touch in the armory as well. They've got the opportunities, but as you say, they have been and they have not been clinical and they've fallen to the players you'd want them to fall to, especially at Kingston. Just haven't been able to finish. Richards along this left channel. Atkinson wasn't on the same wavelength, wasn't expecting that. I, I, also, I also do believe though, Donald, that this Kingston College defense will give you opportunities. Jenkins. Northworthy. Gavin provides the cover for his goalkeeper to come out. Richards to Atkinson. Back to Richards. Khalifa Richards trying to send it long, intercepted by Shepard. Casey do have a few players out due to injury. David Martin, their first string goalkeeper, is sick. Harry Rogers is out injured. So to Lewis Watson. Robinson. As well, this is my challenge. Goes good for goal. Not sure what happened here. Is it another upward bounce for Brightly? That wasn't that all fun. Convincing from the box on number one. He looks quite embarrassed about it, too. He's in front of his fifth corner. As they continue to go about their business of getting the equalizer, they have sent bodies inside the box. Six of them inside. This one's delivered at the near post and it's headed away by Sylvester Douglas. The substitute coming on, McCarthy, needs a good delivery inside. And it's hammered onto the bar! And it's crossed the line now! Kingston College with the equalizer! What a mix up at the back for Vauxhall to give up the softest of goals in the end. And the champions are level. Not sure what Brightly did there. After an impressive save onto the bar. Because this strike from Atkinson was saved by Brightly. Let's see it here. It comes in. Brightly save. Pushes it onto the bar. And then just doesn't recover. But it was an own goal in the end. From Javon Shepard. And his own player blocked him from getting it. Jamari Rowe. But just. <laughs> well, that was just calamitous for Vauxhall. I I'm just wondering if Bradley should have even tried to dive towards it. But he just stopped. Yes, he was slightly blocked. But I'm wondering if he, if he could have. Well, he should taken have done off. more, probably. Nosworthy inside the area. And uh, before he could get the shot off. And here's another attempt that's wide of the mark. But you can't follow your own player, right? If he's in the way, push him out of the way. Correct. You've seen many goalkeepers do that. Exactly. Especially in professional football. 
In fact, we have even injured their defenders just to get there. I just don't think it's a good enough effort from Brightly. There That's to be honest. There is supposed to be a danger alert for goalkeepers. And the way he reacted, it seems as if he didn't think that his team was in danger to concede. He didn't say anything. If you look at Brightly, he's, he was he was silent. Uh, I mean, goalkeepers in that position would be screaming at the defender to get out of the way. As you said, would have pushed him, kicked him, anything to get him out of the way. I just thought that that was... <laughs> Well, Kingston College will be buoyed by that. If ever there was a lucky goal, that was it. Richards with the attempt. High. So it's definitely an own goal. I think the last touch would have come from Javon Shepard. Let's see it here. It comes. Yep, yes, it is Shepard. Yes. Number eight. Javon Shepard. Look at that. That's Brightly, unacceptable. unacceptable from Brightly. And actually, even though Rowe was blocking, the horizontal move was on for Brightly. He could so have he, jumped right. So he wasn't blocking he was the keeper no. to gather the ball. No. Because you always had to track back as the goalkeeper. He, he was blocking Brightly from coming forward, but not going to the side. You've got to be diving there, young Brightly. And even more than that, you've got to be more vocal in your area. So, wow, an own goal for Javon Shepard. Minute number 49. Well, he had five assists to his name. And he never thought that that clearance would have been an assist to Kingston College. And then getting that equalizer, but that was just incredible. Incredible. And unfortunate. And I still can't believe it. I don't know if he can. Now they have to work extra hard to to go ahead, but Casey must be buoyed by that. Keep in mind it's a crucial away goal. Here's a cross inside again to Atkinson. And the follow-up, well, Morrison was some way away from it. Nosworthy has a lot to do. Sends his teammate wide. Britain. That wasn't the best ball from him, though. Do remember what led to that goal. Ball played through. And Williams told to get up by the referee. Do remember what happened in the lead up to that goal. It was a mistake by Brightley at the near post that he <laughs> caused a corner that was never there. As we take a look at the... In between the two mistakes, though, a brilliant save to park right. onto the bar. To park onto the bar. It was that same save that resulted in Javon Shepard. Javon Shepard's upward header that eventually went to the goal. Everything went all wrong there. Because Shepard should have been hitting the ball out. Ended up hitting it towards the goal. And, well... Very unfortunate that Brightly didn't get himself across. Just froze in the moment, Brightly. Almost as if he didn't know what to do. You're not missing any action because there's an injury on the park and the stretcher has come on. Well, Bernard still giving instructions to his team. That's Atkinson and Robinson. He's actually talking to Robinson once more from him in terms of how he puts in an out of play. There is Brightly. So, so the, this is initial play. The save that he made at the near post that he took a deflection. Also, he was trying to prevent the corner and he couldn't get there. Yeah. So that's not too bad, I suppose. He was yeah. trying to prevent the corner, couldn't quite get there. You mean he didn't prevent it? This is the brilliant save. Yeah. And then, and, ah. I can't even describe it. I can't even describe it. Brightly just didn't know, I think, where the ball was heading. Didn't know where he was. He, if, you, if you look at his right leg, he's almost on his tippy toe, like he thinks he's on the edge of a precipice, can't go any further. Right. Instead of moving or skipping across to the ball or diving. But there's no way... You can be there in the middle of your goal and the ball is heading to the net just like that. 
he actually was aiming to move forward. <laughs> he was actually aiming to move forward, which I guess if you're going to blame the defender, sure, he blocked him, but that's not where he was supposed to have been going. Anyway, it's 1-1 one, one after all of that. <laughs> Throw into box all. It's a, a long one on the edge of the box. 14th goal. That's one on. sent inside. It's a chance for Vauxhall, who just got a foot in there with Jamari M Morrison. 14th on the season that Vauxhall have conceded. Here is Kingston College going forward now. Ball played inside, too much on it for Ronaldo Robinson. And well, Richards, well, Tyrese Williams rather. Didn't know too much about that one. Not sure if it's a best of passes from Sajar Blair either. As we're saying, 14th on the season conceded by Vauxhall. This is their 13th match. St. St. Andrew Technical updates coming from the Prison Oval in St. Catherine. St. Andrew Technical finding the equalizer and at full time. St. Andrew Technical 2, Eltham 2. So that's result. two crucial away goals for St. Andrew Technical. Yeah. Of course, prison over in St. Catherine is Eltham's home game, just five minutes away from that stadium, the Eltham School. Let's see what happened there to Jamari Rowe as he mm. held his hamstring. He's walking off, though. And again, he was the player that so-called blocked Stephen Brightly in that goal that Foxhall conceded a row. Can't say Rowe himself made any gallant attempt to head the ball off the line either. <laughs> <laughs> As you rightfully said, it was a total mix-up at the back. And hopefully they can recover from that. Box all. You have nightmares about that as a defender, don't you? Yeah. Morrison skips by one. Jamari Morrison skips by a second. No, not quite. Now here's a not effort, and the keeper spills it, and he gets it before Atkinson could follow up. But again, the long range effort. Stephen Brightly and goal not looking too sprightly. Uh, Brightly has shown so far very hard hands. Doesn't have a welcoming hands as a goalkeeper, Brightly, and hence the balls ricochet off of him quite far. You remember the first half where the opportunity came from the shot from Ronaldo Robinson that Williams should have put away. Some tugging there, there's a foul on Nasworthy. But here is a strike from Sir John Blair. Yeah, and um, it's actually the chest and the ball ricocheted off. Recovered well, though, brightly. Had to get up quickly before Atkinson got in. That will give him some confidence. Five goals apiece. One goal apiece. Free kick to Vauxhall now. Osworthy is behind it. Will he try from here? Could be really ambitious if he did. Osworthy does, and it's high. And actually, well worried. You have to really wonder if he's going to keep the shot the way he approached the ball. No momentum going into the shot. Well, it seems that first attack when they went out like a bullet from a gun and saw the second half, they've just been a little bit, you know, just innocuous in, in, in most everything that they've been doing, Boxer. They don't look purpose driven at all, and the way they conceded kind of just summed it up. Almost like they're taking a nap and still have a and still have a woken up. Well usually when you get a nightmare you wake up immediately, right? And they still haven't woken 
or been shaken out of the apathy. Let's see what can happen with this attack. Not a lot. The keeper comes out to collect. McCarthy. Trying to find Williams. Listen, college up. Told his dominated Manning Cup 2019 thus far, 10 wins from 10, all of 38 goals and one conceded in the first round. This one today, just their second. And even though they're trailing, they're looking to continue that domination, something which has followed the Purples over their history as a school team. When they win, they tend to win in clubs, even though they go through long periods of drought. Oh, they're not trading at the moment, Chris. They have found the equalizer. Yeah. Is there a chance for Vauxhall? He's from college at the back. Doing enough. We go way back to 1964 and 65. A team that believed to be the best in schoolboy football ever. Kingston College team. Arguably, of course, 1964-65 went undefeated in that period. The likes of Tony Keyes, Trevor Jumpy Harris, who has been aligned with the team for quite a while. Neville Oxford, who comes and watches the games a lot. Franklin Moran, Lloyd McLean, two other members of that outstanding team. And in fact, in that era, even defeated a much-talked-about Cavalier. Blair on his bike, gets there, has quite a few players to aim for, Blair. Decides to go for the shot, not sure why. He had four options inside the box. If you remember that period, Cavalier was the, one of the top Premier League teams at the time. Casey contingent. In fact, as we look at the chance here from Blair, wasn't close at all. Remember that period as well? There was a visiting team here from Brazil as well. And that KC schoolboy team actually drew with them. An under-21 Brazil team actually drew with them one all. And if you check the archives, it will say there was a last-minute shot by Neville Oxford that actually hit the upright, and it could actually have been a victory for the KC team. That's how outstanding they were. Went undefeated for two seasons, Kingston College, and that is some feat. Bullock. Robbed. Nice turn from Atkinson. Atkinson running into the space in front of him. Needs some support. Gets it through his captain, Morrison. Richards. Richards will get it again. Gets a corner kick for his efforts. Oh no, it's a goal kick in fact. That's a surprise. No complaints from the players either. Right, his face looks like he's still thinking about that incident 10 or so minutes ago, 15 minutes ago. Confirmation of the yellow card for Blair. Needs to put that behind him though, Brightly. Still a lot of action and Vauxhall will need him at full force. Bro. Hard to kick the Vauxhall. Oxal have looked flat since the goal. Can they resurrect themselves? Fourth corner kick to Vauxhall. At the near post of the keeper gathers. Much too close to the keeper. Ronaldo Robinson now.
for an experienced player, sometimes I feel that he sells himself short, Robinson. We've been saying that all afternoon, just expect more from the KC number 11. He's promised so much. He's been promising for three years, three years. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. For his talent, I mean, he's had, as you said, okay or reasonably good seasons. Last year, got seven goals, Robinson. There aren't a lot of late bloomers in football. But as you can tell, even from the pass, he's just a bit too inaccurate for my liking from his position. Morrison. So this is Robinson again. Let's see what he'll do with this one, Robinson. Oh! Cuts in nicely on his left foot. Robinson blocked and hacked up by Rowe. That's what he can do, Ronaldo Robinson. He needs to do it more consistently. He gets it back. Clear sends it inside. Atkinson looking for the spectacular. He spectacularly missed. <laughs> Casey will start again from the back. So oh, he's a tough one, <laughs> Richards. Sends this one inside. Shepard looking for Nosworthy. Hmm. Nelson. Well, either really silly or really sharp. Turned out to be sharp on that occasion. Robinson should get there. Getting some assistance from Atkinson. Oh, he skies it. Well, not even Chris Gill goes so high with the sixes. <laughs> Getting in the box with more regularity, Kingston College. Um, that would be a concern for him and the Vauxhall defense. But still, the finishing, a bit of a concern from the Purples. Vauxhall making a change. Samuel Johnson is on for Siobhan Francis. Has a goal and an assist to his name. Samuel Johnson. Nine of the 11 players on the path for Vauxhall have scored so far in the competition. Atkinson gets a return ball. And oh, that's a fabulous save. It really was from Brightly. Had to react very quickly there. Oh, nice move. Delightful play. Atkinson cuts it back. And Foxhall defending stubborn, stubbornly. One again by Richards. Now inside the box. Pulls it across. Atkinson couldn't reach there. But uh, Krasani Long puts it behind for a corner. The ball into the box by Khalifa Richards. He's certainly been coming into his own in the second half, using his pace very strong on the ball. Richards, very tough, mostly the individual. And that's a good that's a good ball across the six-yard box. And Atkinson maybe have wished that he was a couple of inches taller. This one sent high at the back post, and Boxall handling that one well. The loss in a dangerous area, though. Was he tripped up on the edge of the box? Well, the kick goes the other way, and the other card will come out for diving, I suspect. Ronaldo Robinson. Book for simulation. Let's have a look. Skillful player. Oh, wow. That's poor. That's really poor. And he will not win an Academy Award for that yeah, piece yeah. of acting either. Yeah. <laughs> it's poor in thought, it was poor in execution as well. Yeah. Not what you want to see. You want to see these youngsters watch a lot of television. He, he wasn't more Salas, wasn't he? <laughs> Donna, Donna, Donna. <laughs> Nosworthy hasn't been on his A game today, has he? Luxor's number nine. Hasn't been given much opportunity either. I think he's been well marshaled. Morrison. 
Williams. The keeper comes out, gets a hand, the follow by Morrison. The champions take the lead. Morrison in the right place at the right time. Brightly beaten again. And the Kingston College, they have come from behind. Morrison getting his first this season at the right time for the champions who now lead by two goals to one. Mix up at the back again for Vauxhall. And they have conceded. Seems like Williams might have been offside, but it was a great save by Brighton initially. And then, well, wrong footed, both himself and his defense. That was a really good save. He's made a couple of really good saves, Brighton, but the recovery just not there. <laughs> wrong footed, good finish. You would have to save from Morrison. And well, well, well. Coming from behind, Beaumont was the defender in front of Brightly, and they were almost shadowing each other, unable to get across. And well directed by Morrison, just his second of the season. That's a big surprise for Casey, is number 10. But an important one, a goal there, and two away goals for Kingston College, even more important. Matthew Bell has been brought on. Five goal man this season, Matthew Bell. Three assists as well for the KC number 15. Well, it's kind of just unraveling for Vauxhall. And it could get worse. Williams, the keeper is off his line, makes another fabulous save. Morrison's effort is blocked. He's going to try again. Morrison, again, it's blocked. Richards on it now. Richards went all the way through to Brightly. He's made a re some really good saves, Brightly. He's came up at big moments. Yes, he did have that one blooper, but had it not been for him, they might have conceded even more. Foxhall. Atkinson takes it well in his stride. This could be three. It is three. Showing resolve, as they always do, Kingston College. The lead opening up now as Atkinson gets his 11th this season. Vauxhall struggling, they look leggy and good pace and power for Dwayne Atkinson and he's 11th on the season Dwayne Atkinson really good finish by Casey's number 13 and just showing real good strength and pace. And we spoke about the fact that along the ground, Casey is a quicker team and really showing it now, coming into their own and Vauxhall struggling. They look tired, they look leggy. Have played two more games than Kingston College and it's starting to show. And the cohesion at the back, the recovery at the back, just not happening for Vauxhall and Casey becoming rampant. Camperdown warming up ahead of their second, uh, ahead of their game against Holy Trinity. to be a leg injury there for the Trinity also warming up as they prepare for the second game of the double header.
ball going around to box four. There's Lola Bernard who spoke about Dwayne Atkinson in the pre-game interview as our player to watch. Really talk about how he's gone from strength to strength. Atkinson in terms of his one-on-one -on -one skills and he certainly showed it there. His speed and ability to finish as he's coming off. That's his last moment in the game. Atkinson, the number 13. And actually sold him one goal shot. It's 12 on the season for Atkinson as he makes his exit. And Kuwain Walker his replacement. Walker himself has a goal for himself so far this season. Lola Bernard, who in his early stages at Kingston College was criticized heavily for not rotating his players very well and the fact that after the first round a lot of them was suffering from burnouts, well, showing that he's learned that lesson last year. We saw a lot of improvement in that area, and here giving some rest to some of his main players as well. This one sent high inside the box, and what a crucial touch there with Gavin. Corner kick to Vauxhall. Sylvester Douglas to take the fifth corner kick for Vauxhall. Burton. Johnson. Collision there. Mosworthy committing the foul. Calvin Gardner was sandwiched <laughs> in that effort to get a header on target from Vauxhall. Double team. <laughs> Casey's number 27, new addition to their defence line, lost all of their back line, apart from McLeod from last season. McLeod not playing, but holding midfield role today. We play left back last season McLeod. Walker. Crumb setting in for some of these players. Javon Shepard feeling it in the cars. So too Young Reed. Richard, sorry. Hadufa. There's Shepard who was a player who conceded the first goal for Casey, an own goal. Shepard. Came off his head. Johnson. Worthy. Could work by Walker all along the turf. Almost got through. Williams. 
16 years of age, Tyrese Williams. One of the younger members of this KC team. Richards skipping inside. Delightful ball to Walker. Should have been better Walker. Got a good delivery. Crucial intervention. Williams. Quite strong for a 16 year old. Williams pulls up the ball well. Not willing to put his body on the line. Scored five times so far this season. Walker. Not the best first touch from Walker. Challenges from behind. Didn't the others who probably impeded the player as well. Take another look at it here. Yep. Free kick to. Vox Hall as we make our deliberations for who could be the MVP of the game. Actually, Gavin at the back for Kingston College has had a really good game. Just delivered inside. And Gardner. But there, here's a shot that's coming and it's saved by Nelson. One more goal to make this interesting. One more goal from Vauxhall. Interesting the tie at any rate. That was not a bad effort at all. Johnson. for Richards is also coming to his own in the second half for Kingston College. Candidate for player of the game. Long throw. Only Bell up front for Kingston College, Matthew Bell. Not sure if he's touched the ball yet, Bell. It's been on for quite a few minutes.
Jamara Marsh and Lira has done well as well. Skip of Kingston College, scored the second goal. He's been quite creative within the middle of the party. He's been charged down well, not allowed to use that left foot more times than not. So Walker is coming forward. Lovely ball to Bell. Got a foot in there. Good shuttle. Walker almost looks like he has on a different kit because he's the only player on the part that has his shirt tucked in. <laughs> well, from KC, of course, that is. Clear. He is shooting this. And it is well wide. Goal kick. Marzo remains on the turf. The KC face faithful with a will accept the result, I suppose. Even if they do expect a, a better performance. Cameron players going through their drills as they prepare for the next game with Holy Trinity as their second round begins. Morrison with a limp coming off. Maybe it for him. Walker in the wide area. Looking for Bill, he was. Walker again with some space to work with. Finds the overlapping glare. Back inside to Walker. Just a lot of ideas in the end, Walker. So, what's between Talifa Richards and Jamari Morrison as we confirm that Morrison's last act has passed? And Jolly White is on. Number 12 for Kingston College. What's on line saying Dwayne Atkinson should be the MVP? He had a good game as well, Atkinson. Now, he did score the third goal. Had quite a few opportunities as well that were saved by Stephen Brightly. Or he missed altogether. <laughs> good work by Bell. 
hard first touch from Williams. Couldn't quite control it. Bites. Two ball from him. Nosworthy. Jenkins. It's been a disappointing second half from Vauxhall. Never ever recovered from that first goal they conceded, even though it was an error. They just shoulder started to to drop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they get started to look towards the grass. Almost like they lost belief. It does happen sometimes when, I want to have a better word, Minos come against, come up against the big teams, the Giants. Yeah. When they are up, their heads are high, but as soon as things start to balance out, you really start to see the pedigree coming through. They don't react well to adversity, do they? Ball inside to walk those offside. I like what Richards has done. I really like what he has done, especially in the second half, providing that width for Kingston College. You mean that one telling ball into the box? It was, it was more <laughs> than one. Chris Taylor? Yeah, he has not a bad second half, Richards, or maybe a bad 15 minutes in the second half. But the fans have spoken. They have said Dwayne Atkinson for his goal and the attempts that he created, even though many of them were saved by Brightley, added some width to the KC attack. He's no longer on the field, by the way, the KC number 13. He was substituted for Kawain Walker. Who is that man? Neatly player in terms of his disposition at any rate. McCarthy. Bell. Outside. Casey had just joined. There was a, another early game at the Spanish Town Prison Oval. It ended St. Andrew Technical 2, Eltham 2. St. Andrew Technical's first goals conceded in the season. And that was, of course, Eltham's home game. So St. Andrew Technical with two crucial away goals. This Fox Hall's home game, so Kingston College, three away goals. It's certainly be a big deal. Johnson is outside. In this game, you'd have to say, though, for especially the first half, or maybe the first 10 minutes of the second, seemed like it would have been a lot closer than it is ended. And it has ended in favour of the champions. Kingston College with a 3 1 win over Vauxhall. And uh, Atkinson providing the topping in this Kingston College victory after it was pretty much handed to them following Kimar Britain's opening goal for Vauxhall. They capitulated at the back to say the least to Vauxhall. An own goal plus. Well, the strikes from Jabari Morrison, their number 10, and Dwayne Atkinson was enough. As the Kingston College, they head into the second leg with some confidence. Not even now would be pleased with the result, if not the performance. So to the Kingston College fans who came to witness this encounter, after 90 minutes, it's Vauxhall High 1, Kingston College 3.
So Kingston College with the important away win. Let's look at the goals. First came in the 17th minute. Good free kick by Kamar Britton to start off things against the odds. And nicely placed free kick that came after 17 minutes. His fourth of the season, Kemar Britton. And got Vauxhall off to a 1 0 advantage. They would hold that advantage for the first half. This second half action, ball into the box. Really good strike by Dwayne Atkinson, which was saved by Brightley. But then just a recovery save, not there from Vauxhall's number one. Confusion at the back. And well, unfortunately for them, the own goal goes against Javon Shepard, their number eight, and Casey were back into it. That came after 49 minutes. Then in the 71st minute, Casey really imposing themselves, and Jamar Morrison getting away, nice through ball, played to Tyrese Williams, it was saved, but Jamar Morrison reacting quicker and placing that into the far corner, the Casey number 10, and captain, just his second of the season, and KC with a come from behind lead. At that point, they would extend their lead as he called for the supporters to lift up. That was after 71. This after 74, just three minutes later. And Dwayne Atkinson showing his pace, showing his strength, and showing his clinical finish. That's why he's a leading goal scorer for KC this season with 12. And that was a good finish from our MVP. And KC is number 13 and big game player. So we have a look at the full match statistics. Nine shots, five on target from Vauxhall. Eight on target from the 21 shots KC took. 18 fouls and two yellow cards shown one to either team. And six offsides, KC continued to dominate that category. Certainly weren't holding the line well. And 12 corners, KC enjoying seven of them. 61% possession for the winning team. Kingston College, the defending champions, defeating Vauxhall High by three goals to one. And of course, the sports maximum of the match today is Dwayne Atkinson. Congratulations on your performance. Congratulations on the win today. How important is today's win? Well, it's a great win. You know that coming with victory in the first leg after one sixteen. Looking forward to the next leg and get the victory. Please with how you play? Yes, miss. It's a great season to know that when the school and the score sheet and also have twelve goals from my school. Congratulations, Dwayne. Thank you. All right, doing Atkinson there, our sports maximum of the match today. Uh, the coach is still uh, giving instructions to his player. He doesn't realize that the game has ended. So I'm going to invite Ludlow Bernard to come and join me as uh, Kian Broderick, the head coach of Vauxhall, as I said, is still issuing out instructions to his players. Ludlow, congratulations on the win here today. When I spoke to you earlier, you mentioned that the first round was a walk in the park. And today would give you a little bit of challenge, uh, especially conceding that goal in the first half. But you came back. How important are these three solid away goals? Oh, well, I'm not even realizing that the, the, the factor of the away goals. But it is very important that we, we got a victory here today after our, our trials lately, you know. Um, I knew we had it in us. We created multiple opportunities, but our... Our shot selection, our in front of the goal decision making was extremely poor here today. And I think that's somewhere that we have to do going forward. I was going to say, I know you're a hard man to please. And I can usually tell by the look on your face, but you just summed up your reason for that look on your face. Uh, another leg to go. Um, obviously, those are some of the things you will be working on. That's correct. Um, clearly, because I think we can cover that about. We were faulty with the free kick. I think the goalkeeper cheated a bit. But um, the boy is certainly doing a lot of in front of the goal activity over the next couple of days, and um, presumably for games going forward. Thank you, coach. Thank you for your time. Good. Ludlow Bernard, their head coach of Kingston College. Kian Broderick, the head coach of Vauxhall, now joins me. Kian, I was looking for you just now. Where were you? You were still issuing out instructions. What was that about? I'm trying to get the players to cool down to stretch because we have the second leg coming up um, in a couple of days, so we, we need to recover in order to give a good fight in the second leg. Now you got that uh, first goal, but it was not enough to um, get you the win here today. Um, where do you think you lost this game? 
um, the, the concentration. We ask for, for them to have a high level of concentration. We know that KC, um, attacking wise, they are a very good team. They have a lot of quality, especially in the final third. And we ask for them to concentrate. Um, nonetheless, I believe that the, the boys did creditably well. Um, when you look at what's at this what's at high school team, we, we had no persons transferred in. Um, every one of them started the school from grade seven. These are boys that we work with from the under 14 level. No one we had to bring in the school to play for the school. And they have developed well. They have showcased. They have showcased themselves um, somewhat out here. But we have another leg to go, and let's see where it goes in the second leg. Speaking of the second leg, Kingston College has three away goals. How do you turn around the style in your favor? Definitely, we have to score more goals. That's it. That would be the objective. Um, definitely, we would have to work in the final third. Um, going back into training, and uh, we'll see how best we can get with those crucial away goals. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thanks. Our coach, Broderick, there of uh, Vauxhall High, hoping to turn around this tie in the second round against Kingston College. This is where I wrap things up for you. The defending champions, they are on their way to defending their title with a 3-1 win over Vauxhall High in the second round of Digital Manning Cup competition. Of course, the man of the match went to Kingston College's Dwayne Atkinson. All right, guys, this is where I leave you on behalf of the hardworking production team. The guys up in commentary, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon. It's a schoolboy football brought to you by Digicel, the bigger, better network. Water, land of good and water. KFC is finger licking good.